and the Caribbean, in fact, is a, is a good example here because it has led a well-orchestrated regional response to COVID-19. And Barbados's Prime Minister, Mia Motley, has called for moral leadership and a new international economic order to address the inequality within and between countries. In a recent media interview, she described the effectiveness of women's leadership in this crisis, saying, quote, we care, and that has made all the difference. Prime Minister, great to have you with us. Thank you so much for the leadership and the great work that you do. Thank you so much, Zain. It is a pleasure to be here, Deputy Secretary General, um, and all of the others who are with us today, President, Madam President, I ha have come this morning simply to say that we too in the Caribbean want the world to rise with women. And we do so conscious that this is a moment, yes, as the Deputy Secretary General said, for resetting. You know, all issues are women's issues. And the ability for us to be able to face whatever circumstances meet us on a daily basis is essentially the greatest virtue of women. Women don't get to choose what they see, what they feel, what they do most days. And we have now to be able to create a level playing field that creates the opportunities for all. I have found myself in a difficult position very often because much of what I say at the personal level is in fact now reflected for small states because the same dichotomy with respect to rights and relationships and power exists not just at the individual level, but also at the level of states. And to that extent, I've found myself over the last two years trying to speak on behalf of small states, trying to recognize that as we navigate our way through this global community, we cannot continue to have a set of states that are seen and heard and others that are not. We begin to question the injustice of the relationship, the injustice of the organizations that deem one set superior and another inferior. And I use that language not in any contentious way, but as part of our reality that we face every day. Um, over the course of this pandemic, I've found myself having to communicate across the Caribbean, reminding persons that our duty is to stay focused on mission. And what is the mission? That we want to create a people who are committed, who are creative, who are conscious, who equally are caring. And that we do so not because of the circumstances that we want to have, but we do so against the backdrop of our reality. What is, what is practical and what is it that allows us to move people to the next level? Um, we therefore have come to this point in time conscious that the con Convergence of climate and COVID. I seem to be com consumed with all of the seas today. Climate and COVID have created this unique opportunity for us to take our people and lift them to the next level. How? The most important asset that any young person moving into society needs is the ability to care. Then they need commitment. Then they need a level of consciousness to understand what transpired before and why circumstances may not be as they would want to see them. We see all that is happening in the Black Lives Matter as a revolt not just of individual black people within the United States of America to want to have greater access to power, but it is also a reflection of those countries who came to pass since the formation of the United Nations 75 years ago and since the establishment of an arrangement that was supposed to create opportunity and equality for all. But then you ask yourselves, how do you continue to have a set of countries determining that only those countries and only those proxies and only those definitions that matter to, to the larger countries are allowed to dominate? And what do I mean by that? What does maternal child health, maternal mortality at this stage have to do with our ability to be able to access the in vitro diagnostics to be able to successfully fight COVID? It's just a lazy, a lazy definition for being able to determine who should benefit and who should not. What does historic per capita income have to do with my vulnerability today as to how I will be able to find the funding to be able to to, to take care of my people. The bottom line is, is that we have to move beyond 
the laziness of the moment. And we have to move beyond the things that allow us to literally, literally make assessments and judgments that preclude too many of our people. And whether it is in the form of the naming and shaming that is taking place internationally, that then adds burdens to countries such that the flow of revenue and the ability of banks to do relationships are compromised, as is happening to many of our countries now because of the naming and shaming of, of, of countries, we are then less capable of being able to meet the problems presented to us by both the pandemic and the climate crisis. I pray today that we will find the commitment to recognize that it is that moral leadership, it is that ability to care, it is that ability to listen, it's that ability to speak truth to power without rancor that is going to make the fundamental difference of whether we can move the world and our countries and our families and our communities from here to the next level. And if we can do that, then we rise. And sometimes the best way of rising is claiming ground, pausing and breathing, and then moving again and claiming ground. And that's what we in the Caribbean have had to master because we don't come with all of the resources of others, but we come with the commitment, the creativity, the consciousness, and above all else, the capacity to care. Thank you.